and then we close the show. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, April 14th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I'm the Wombat. Welcome. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not, I'll guarantee it. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break. What's our topic today? Movies. We're talking about movies. We're talking about some of our favorite movies and how we can make them even better, including infusing them with the glory of Jesus Christ. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it'd be yeah. good. You know, yeah. as we as we wrap up the 365 episodes of this show that we've done, let's have some fun with it and yep. discuss some of our favorite Two more movies. after today. I know. We got to let everybody else know. But yep, yep. Uh, <clears throat> why, why not talk about some of our favorite forms of media, favorite video games, have it be more focused on us and getting and, and, and transitioning away from just bashing on Christianity, as all our friends say. Also, we'll have some mm-hmm. listener comments at the end of the show, too. Uh, I wanted to talk about our favorite movies. Shrek, uh, Larry, I know you happen to be a big Shrek fan. I did not, I never knew that was such a thing as, uh, I, well, when you gave me your list of movies and it was like Shrek was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It was a top one. I've watched it probably five, six times. Uh, but you, you came from like the golden age of movies. You had like the original pillow talk. You had gone with the wind. You had like the, the Tiffany's. The you true know, American yeah. movie classics. And I asked you, okay, so what's your favorite movie of all time? Shrek. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, yeah. you know. One of it the just best. hit all the buttons. I don't know why. I, I love <laughs> good animation. And it sure. was some of the best animation. It covered a lot true. of topics like talking animals and, and, and dragons and and love and just everything. And he it was goes a monster. Places. And my Beauty and the Beast, you know, kind of thing. It, it kind of had everything. It had a lot of jokes in it. And I sure. love that. Sure, Very sure. It's movie. a good time. It's a good yeah. time. It's a good mm-hmm. time. It's a sort of movie where it doesn't really matter what five minute section you're watching, you're gonna have a good time regardless. Of. Like there's no point where you're just like waiting for the next thing to happen. There's always right. something very meaningful. There's always always something good going on. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I love animation is because every frame, every frame costs so much money to make in a especially in the early days of animation. Right. Mm-hmm. That it wasn't necessarily made by committee, but it was sort of passed through. Hey, if it's going to cost us a million dollars to make this 30 second piece, let's make sure it really, really matters or has a lot of weight to it. Cause otherwise we're just going to waste a lot of time. If it's just two characters staring at each other, yeah. we're wasting money. So like throw some gingerbread men in there in the background, yeah. have some Easter eggs in there, make something happen. Yeah. Tell, tell us it's not on your to-do list. Little things like that. You know, for slaying the dragon, not on my to-do yet list yet. Right, right, right. That cost too much money. We need something else. Yeah. I did yeah. like I did like um a lot of the animations that came out when I was growing up. Uh CGI stuff. I remember I had Pix so I grew up started with Toy Story One when Pixar came out. And that was around uh preschool for me. Like I remember when that movie dropped. And then per- percussively, like every four or five years there was a new toy story that came out and i had right. to keep hearing the <laughs> you got a friend of me song and i just thought to myself like okay why is this movie come out and then i go there and andy's a little older and he's my same age and i'm like okay that's fine I'll, i guess i'll let this go through then toy story 3 comes out i'm like they didn't need to be a three i i saw a two we, there was an end mm-hmm. it was the beginning of the middle. all right fine i'll watch the third one. Oh, and andy's a little older he's in he's in high school too that's interesting that's weird he's not playing with his toys either i wonder where my toys are and then finally toy story mm-hmm. 4 came out i'm like there's no need for toy story 4 like the toys don't even want a toy story 4 and then they finally did it and like andy's in college and i'm like i'm in college and he's just like here can I have my toys kids <laughs> And I'm you like, grew I... up with Andy. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere, 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 there is like some 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 place that has like all my old toys. Hopefully, yeah. yeah but maybe they've been recycled. being used by a new generation of kids, right? Maybe a junior generation of kids. <clears> maybe <throat> they're a new cup, or maybe they're a car panel somewhere. Yeah. Who knows? I hope they got. So how that. how would that movie be made better? Uh so <laughs> you know, 
the idea that we had for today's show was we have these two competing interests almost in all cases science fiction and when i say science fiction i just mean literally like having fun with science and the themes of science and uh jesus and what i mean by jesus is like having a spiritual message put into your story where mm -hmm. people are more recognizing the fact that they are mortals and that the only true way to salvation is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's get them back on the plan, the one true plan, if you will. And you can't really mix those two together without either sounding really preachy or being really hand-fisted with it. But you do have these two elements that are sort of like salt and pepper, right? And I wonder, like, what movies in our favorite cavalcade of movies would benefit from a little bit more science fiction versus a little bit more Jesus Christ. Like, could we make a better Shrek if we threw in some science fiction into it? And would it actually be better as a result? Or what if we threw in some Jesus Christ? Would that make the movie even better? And I wonder which of these two ingredients would consistently be the better spice well, to I, well, I'm so assuming that when you say uh, throw in a little Jesus Christ into the movie that you're yeah. referring to, a, a biblical Jesus Christ and not some fictional or exactly, well, I exactly. guess he is fictional, but not some random uh, off the wall version of, of Jesus Christ. One right, right, that right. <clears throat> would push a moral story. Right, uh, right, right. So sanctioned like, by the church. Exactly. So if you mm -hmm. had Donkey and Shrek, they're walking down and they're doing their shenanigans. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. Donkey stops and he says, listen, I cursed in the last scene when we left that gingerbread house. And I want to remind us that God does not like cursing and that we should honor our mother and father. And then they just nod their heads and then they just keep going to the next scene. Like, wouldn't that be a great way? <laughs> yeah, nothing like adding a little guilt to a, a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah you could... uh, it would certainly, to me, it would bring the movie down. It would like, <laughs> bum it out. You know? You're bummed out. You're yeah. like, oh, what was that bummer? Okay, I mean, there's a lot of cool things that you could throw in with Jesus lessons. I mean, he could be eating like a, a, a meal of fish and realize he doesn't have enough fish and bread for all of his friends. So they pray. And then next thing you know, there's just a bunch of fish and, and bread all over the place. So it, that'd be a cool way. No, I think that the problem with it would be that uh, just p having him appear in there would mm. throw a whole different light on the movie because it would shift the person's viewpoint while watching it from one of enjoyment and, and fun and, you know, and comedy to, you know, guilt and sin and, and death and redemption and all that stuff. But we just, ah. the total amount of baggage that would throw into the movie, you know, but the thing about it is there are churches out there that won't let kids see movies like Shrek sure. or uh, uh, even Woody Woodpecker, I'm sure, or any of the other films that are quote of the world because they want to keep them, you know, sternly and firmly thinking about Jesus and, and heaven and hell and sin and redemption all the time. It's, it's kind of a knowledge bubble that they, they, they don't want the kids to break out of. And of course they wouldn't be able to access the internet or anything like that either. But sure. of course some religions are much more progressive and do allow it. So I don't want to dismiss them all. I, I thought it was funny that you brought this up because um, typically whenever anything gets very popular, one of two things happen. Um, it gets so popular that Christians either say it's evil and we need to stop having it and it's completely ungodly and it shouldn't belong in our church. And then the next thing that happens, which isn't necessarily like the alternative, but oftentimes the consequential next step is that it gets so popular that it becomes part of sermons and there's like Christian uh uh plays that are based off of it and people will be like no it was always a christian movie it was always a christian thing we've always had this in christianity and i'm looking at pastors that have given in 2021 or 2001 uh sermons detailing how shrek is in fact uh, a message a, a christian family movie because they have references to talking donkeys which is given in Numbers 22, 28. They have the Song of Hallelujah, yep. which is a song by uh, uh, um, Leonard Cohen mentions that there's a secret God or a secret chord that David played that pleased God uh -huh. as a cit uh, citation for it. There's also Green Giant, and we know how much of the Bible loves giants. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Stomping on fairy yeah. tale creatures, it's, it's which a are small unbiblical. portion of the, of the first uh, chapters, you know, first. Books 
and then for, forgotten the rest of the time. Your favorite movie is a Christian movie this whole time. That's all the pastors would tell you. They just say, oh, okay, you like Shrek? You, did you know that was a Christian movie? Let me explain to you why. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, one of my favorite movies growing up was Home Alone. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Have you ever oh, seen Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. One and two. Oh, I don't think they made a three, did they? They did. They made a three. There's even a four out. They had wow. a different kid. That's a different mm -hmm. kid this time. It's not the same vibe. It's it, mm -hmm. not even the same filming. It's like almost a... It looks like it looks like a Hallmark special compared to like the old school versions. But yeah. the the in the similar sense of Home Alone and Willy Wonka, I'll throw these two movies out because everyone in Willy Wonka, everyone who remembers Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, remember only the parts where Willy Wonka comes out and they start doing the crazy shenanigans in the movies. Right. In the in the chocolate factory where there's like kids being sucked up tubes and there's Oompa Loompas dancing around. But a lot of people don't realize that's like the last fifth of that movie. There's a whole four. Oh, movies yeah. Before and, that, and that movie even begins. Right. The front the whole front part to me was just boring. If you I know mean, yeah. about the last fifth. Yes. The first four mm -hmm. fifths are boring. But if I didn't know about them, then I'm actually really invested in the story that's being brought up and just blown away by how everything like this incredibly long climax of just right. this just happens because mm -hmm. I was not prepared for that kind of movie happening. And that's how I felt when I watched home alone. Cause I thought home alone was going to be like a sad movie about a kid who's just like left alone because his parents. Don't why, why did you watch it? Cause it was like on TV because we had a substitute teacher and I'm just like, I don't know about this movie. And my mom never got a chance to see it. We never had a lot of opportunities to go to the movie theater. So I'm watching it and the whole movie's sad. Cause it's like this kid's home alone and I'm like, this and is his, his whole family, called? his big family, left his whole family just left without him. Yeah, and he's yeah. just like, oh, I and I don't even yeah. get along with them. And yeah. they just completely the problem, forgot about for those who may not have seen it is the family was so large. Yeah, had like he had like five or six brothers and sisters uh, is that they were trying to get everything ready, go to the airport and get on the plane. And they just didn't notice the little kid wasn't there with him. Not only that, but like it, it felt like for a period of time, they didn't even know he was gone. Right. So like his impact mm -hmm. in the family was so minuscule that uh -huh. I just felt like, man, this is a sad situation. Mm -hmm. Not only that, plus he has robbers trying to like rob his home or slash kidnap him at the same time too. Like this yeah. is a situation. Yeah. I hope he comes out of this. Okay. <laughs> but the whole time the kid's just like, you know what, what I need to do. And this is the part where I th start thinking about like the, the two modes of thoughts. I'm going to make lemons out of lemonade and start figuring out what I can do in my home to like properly protect myself. I'm going to get that tape recorder set up. I'm going to get mm -hmm. that cardboard cut out of that cowboy. I'm going to get that those pink cans pink, up on the screen. Yeah. I'm going to put the marbles on the stairs. I'm going to make this whole, this is my home. This is my home. It's a whole Rocky situation. You know, Rocky's also another movie where it gets really, really uh, ramped up at the very end, but the whole movie is a very slow start, but home alone, very slow start. And then finally you have this beautiful cascade of like built, you built up this, you had the setting, you could have mm -hmm. gone in a sad direction and said you went in a nice engineering science fiction direction. And you're like, I'm going to do engineering to protect myself. This one kid taking initiative, but he's setting up, setting up, setting up. And then the neighbors come or the, the gob, the, the robbers come the and robbers, they grab yeah. the doorknob and it's super hot. And they're like, ah, we're going to kill this kid. Then they open up the door and the pink hands hit their face. And you're like, Oh, mm -hmm. I remember when he did that. And then they climb up the stairs and they fall because of the marbles. And then they're like, What's the, what the hell's going on in this house? We we we're so agitated by this kid. We're gonna take this kid down, and uh, every step of the way, the kid's like completely <clears> making <throat> sure he's one foot ahead of him until the very end when he runs out of his bag of tricks and he finally has that one crazy neighbor help him out. I just thought, mm -hmm. and then the mom finally comes home. She's like, "Oh, I finally found you home." I'm like that's a cool movie because yeah. I feel like the kid was able to take care of himself at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Oh, but, it was very resourceful. Yeah. Very resourceful. It changed the way how I saw everything in my home afterwards. I felt so much more independent as a kid. Yeah. And I felt like oh, I in the movie would the crazy neighbor be Jesus. <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> maybe. What if what I was thinking is, you know, he spent a lot of time building and engineering. What if he just prayed? What if the movie in the in the second act was instead of like, I'm gonna build a bunch of stuff to protect myself? He's like, you know what? I'm just gonna rely on the blood of the lamb to mm. get me out of this tough situation. Oh, Heavenly Father. Yeah, and didn't do anything me. else. Sooner yeah. or later, sooner preferably more than later, can you please protect me from these evil people who are coming through my door? In fact, I am putting all of my faith in you. And he just prays, and there's like the music coming down, and then it's finally a Christmas miracle 
the when the robbers go to the wrong home or something like that, and they rob some other kids' home, and they steal some other kid, and he's like, yeah. "Thank you, God, for letting them steal the black neighbors who live next to me, oh, and that's not bad. me." Amen. Yeah. And mm. then they cut the credits. I'd be like, "Hey, you know what?" <laughs> Well, you probably just gave somebody an idea, so they're probably going to go out and make it now. Yeah. yeah, my misfortunes were given to the brown people next door. Thank goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. No? No. No, no? I don't think it would make it a better movie. Christmas no. classic? No, no, no. No. Okay. Uh-uh. You said keep um, the science fiction. Okay. And what, what they'd probably do in a movie, uh, if they made it, was make the next door neighbors Muslim. So it, you know, <laughs> they, they would be praying to the wrong God. Okay, see, oh, um, Larry, you made the worst movie possible. So yes, yeah, so you have the Christian neighbors who forget their one kid, and you have the Muslim neighbors who are like totally fine, normal citizens, but they get janked by robbers because the Christian prayed to have their mm-hmm. house. Yeah. And that teaches you two lessons. One, you want to be on God's side, and you don't want to be in, not on God's side. So, right. Or if you're on, not on God's side, then you're doomed. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit the yeah. Bible. You got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Lessons learned. It's all about the lessons, Larry. That's yeah. all what it is. Okay. okay. What about Guardians of the Galaxy? What? How would you that make me. it a better movie? Why is that your favorite movie? First of all. Oh, it's well. I love humor in movie, and it's got mm-hmm. a lot of humor in it. I love science fiction. Um, I love action. There's a lot of action in that movie. Explosions and ship you know, fights and stuff. Um, one of my favorite scenes is how that guy controls his little arrow that answers uh. to his whistles. Okay. That's awesome. But I don't know. I, I don't think it would be better by adding religion to it. Oh, uh, you know. I don't think any of them would, but yeah, that's just it, me. It's very interesting that you bring that up because I would almost recommend, and I know you love video games, that there's a Guardians of the Galaxy video game. Have you heard of that game yet? No. I'll okay. have to look it up. I would highly recommend it. I'll give you a link to it after the show. But there is a okay. Guardians of the Galaxy video game. Uh, released by Idius Montreal, I believe. Um, it is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Though your fr- the thing is, video games are a lot longer than movies. Yeah. So you will play this video game for roughly forty hours, maybe even fifty hours. And when you are done with that video game, those characters' faces and their personality and their voices will become your Guardians of the Galaxy more so than who the people are in the movies. Like you will mm-hmm. like bond with these people yeah or at first you'll be like they don't look like how they they don't look like the actors and then at a certain point you'll be like i am these <laughs> these people <laughs> and then you think like this is the only way they could ever be and then you go back yeah. to the and you're like whoa who are you guys this is so weird that was the yeah. thing that had but the villain in that movie is actually uh a pretty good analogy for over dogmatic religions because there's a there's a sequence in the video game, and I'm not giving too much away, where life becomes very difficult for people in the universe. And so someone's offering us a way out that doesn't necessarily resolve the problem, but basically distracts you from the problem by focusing on some sort of religious figure, right? And so yeah. everyone, a lot of people are now migrating towards this religious figure, and it's like up to you and your crew to either contend with that, with a, hey, Truth is a hard pill pill to swallow. I have a I only have the truth on our side and it's not very delicious, but we need to swallow it so we can deal with our problems versus even members on your crew realizing like, you know what? It's a lot easier for Junior to just do what this guy's saying and add to his, yeah. you know, his messaging. And like that 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 message of, you know, life is difficult, but you still got to live it, you know? Like you still yeah. got to address it. That's such a was such a powerful message to me for that game, and you end up saying and doing things as Peter Quill in that game that makes me feel like man. At the end, I was crying. It was just such a good story. He goes through so much emotionally, and when the video game is over and you go back to the movies, you're like, "Who are you, dude?" Like, I don't have a problem with you as a game, as a, as as a movie cast, but I just figured like sixty hours with these other characters, man, I'd rather play a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy the video game than watch another ten. Guardians of the Galaxy movies. It's just so good. Highly recommend it. I'll send you. Yeah, I'll definitely try it. Thank you. I need a good recommendation every once in a while. I just finished the two Jedi games and I love both of them. The second one, especially. Then you'll Uh, love third person. Oh, you'll love third person. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, and also that woman who uh, 
way in the future who uh, kills the machines or hunts the machines that have turned to animals, basically. You told me about it. Yeah, Horizon um, Zero Dawn. Yeah, yeah, that, okay. uh, that's a third-person game, and I loved it. So you'll love this game because there's also a nice little mechanic where um, as you fight with your team, you yeah. have a you have a cassette tape uh, that can be set to like old school songs from like the early 80s. Oh, like great. 80s. And if you <laughs> punch it, you get to do a team huddle where you get to like give like a pep talk, but it's based based on the conversations that you've had in the past. So you have to pay attention to like all the lines. And if someone's like having a down day because Rocket Raccoon couldn't find a screwdriver you have to like give a pep talk that's all about finding the right tool for the right job which gets him charged up and if you get like the right messaging lined up he's pumped up everyone else is pumped up and then like they start playing like a brand new song instead of like oh, really? fight music <laughs> it's like i don't give a blank about your reputation <laughs> and it feels yeah. so good to just have everyone like bond as a team also it's a sort of game where it's like the goonies maybe we can talk about the goonies uh next half but yeah, yeah no one ever shuts up there's always conversations with your yeah. team going on in the background so if you just stand and listen you could listen to like hours and hours at a time but yeah honestly you need to like come on guys we need to do the next thing it's like oh but this guy's yelling at was like doesn't matter come on guys we need to move forward you're always like the guy who's like trying to keep things going as best as you can even though you're yeah. like the one human in the group okay cool i'll have to definitely try it it'll Super be my next game, game. Rest nice assured. man highly <laughs> recommend highly recommend yeah, i give it a 10 yeah. out of 10 yeah. you will do some really really uh sincere things it's a good game if you love the jedi games i love this mm -hmm. more than the jedi games in my opinion okay cool cool <laughs> next movie <laughs> okay uh we got like four oh minutes. we didn't talk about how it would be made better with jesus no i was i was saying the video game addresses it oh. the video game oh. if you want to know how it, it is and i don't want to spoil it for you since we're talking about it on the show but you get to see people recognize that dogma that just distracts you from your problems while a good temporary or feels good temporarily is actually not the long-term it's detrimental to you in the long run it absolutely is and mm -hmm. so the whole game is about understanding listen things aren't perfect things kind of suck life is hard it's not gonna necessarily always get easy but it's the life that we got to live you know everything else this what this guy's telling you isn't a, is a lie it's just uh it's a simulation. It's a magic trick. We need right. to focus on us to get better. Like that's how we're don't be get distracted from your life in hopes of a good afterlife. That's right. Listen, yes. that's the game you should play next, Larry. You mm -hmm. would absolutely <laughs> love it. I, I definitely will. Okay, cool. Uh, my let's see, we got a quick one. Let me do one other one. Honey, I shrunk the kids is one of my faves. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why is because I uh, when I you when you're really small, the you realize that adults don't see things the way you do and that you're almost living as if you're in your own world where like cabinets aren't as big as you want them to be. Cups are too big for you. Plates are too big for you. Bags of groceries are too heavy for you. And you think like, man, when will I ever get to the age where things finally feel like they're around my size, right? And so when I saw Honey the Shrunk the Kids, it was sort of like seeing adults get shrunk back to a paradigm where they think, whoa, this world wasn't made for me, but it is the world that exists. I live in. Yeah. For a lot of people, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when mm -hmm. I saw Honey the Shrunk Kids, I felt like, yeah, finally adults are going to understand how I feel. But I also thought to myself, man, what if we got rid of the science fiction aspects of this and just had it be where the parents get shrunk down and for them to get right back to the regular size, they pray to God. And they, they confess their sins mm -hmm. to the Almighty Father. And they let them know that they are not perfect, but they are willing to open up their hearts to the one true of truths, the yeah. king of all kings. And the glory of all glories. Rah, or oh, Well, man. as usual, <laughs> that, that theme overlooks the fact that he allowed them to get in that predicament in the first place. God if gives he, people tests. Sorry. If it, <laughs> he doesn't know the answer to the tests. <laughs> He's not all knowing. Yeah. It's, you know, people always start at a certain point and say, God help me going forward. Mm. And, but they never, <laughs> never back it up to the point where they got in the trouble or the car accident or, you know, lost their job or whatever. Right, right, well, right. Why wasn't God looking out for me then? I prayed no. before that. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. praying for good things to happen to me. And how, to, how come this bad thing happened to me? A lot of people don't realize that every moral story with God is basically a guy who dug a ditch, like a hole in the ditch, put like a false top on top of it mm -hmm. and waited 
like eagerly mm -hmm. as you're walking towards like it. the garden of eden yeah and just staring yeah. at you smiling smiling and you're like oh, what's going on here and then you suddenly fall 20 feet and you break both your legs and he looks over the top and he's like i could give you a rope and you're like i'll take a rope please and you climb yourself out the rope and he's like i gave you a rope and mm. you have to be like thank you for giving me the rope the end and you're right. like what a weird story <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's like you would like be a, in a really bad situation. It's like, no, yeah. I tested you and I gave you a rope afterwards. That's how yeah. we're back. Like to Garden, one. Garden of Eden. Why did he put the tree in the garden? Yeah. And once once they did it, why was he walking around the garden looking for him? Didn't right. he know where everything? did not right. he see everything? Isn't he everywhere at once? Mm. It's like he's just playing games with them. You know? He was. It's basically when I like pretend to throw a doll for my cat and my cat's like, where's the doll? And I'm like, I have the doll still in my hand. <laughs> Let's look for it together. I put yeah. it in my pocket. It's the same. Did you ever see those magic tricks when they're done uh, on an animal, like a dog yes. or something? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And they're just totally taken aback because they have no concept of where it could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogs. Uh, I saw a guy doing it to gorillas <laughs> at the zoo, and that's just so, uh, well, sad, actually, because they have no concept of what's going on. Sure, sure. I can totally see that. I could also say like, man, animals are super smart and we're not much different. You know, I think it's just mm -hmm. the subversion of our expectations affect yeah. beyond just humans. But like, mm -hmm. that's a really good trick to show like animals know what's up. I love the one where they have a mirror in the woods or a jungle and they'll mm -hmm. have like a bear oh. walk across it and the bear's uh -huh. like, what in the world is this? I've never seen this before. And then after a while, they're like, oh, it's me. That's interesting. What the, what's going on yeah. here? Very few animals have have the ability to recognize themselves in a mirror. Yeah, the I'm not sure bear does. The, but the, uh, I mean, the one I saw where the bear found the mirror within seconds, that mirror was broken on the ground. <laughs> there are there are such things as dumb bears and smart bears. It's <laughs> okay, I'll take your word for it. I haven't seen a smart one. <laughs> Don't let the dumb bears control your entire idea of all populations. Bears like we aren't with that bear. That's why that bear is by himself yeah. next to the mirror. Okay. Yeah. We right, need to I take a break. Are you, are you ready for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm, I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 22nd year now, and we have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's old city at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or by visiting our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Start one. Right. One back where you want to pick up. I do want to I want to go back to bears real quick. Bears real quick before we move on. Bears real quick okay. before we move on. Because, you know, I always worry about the alien race that comes visits us for the first time. And they're like, you know, let's just pick anywhere on the planet. It doesn't really matter. Let's just pick. And I, I don't want to pick on anybody. Let's pick on some people. Arkansas. We'll just go to Arkansas. And then there's a weird little like plant, plant pontoon. Uh, uh, uh -huh. boat, and they like suck those people up. And they're like, this is the humanity, guys. We're going to run some tests on these people. And it'll represent how everybody is on this planet. I'd be like, don't do that. Don't do that there. <laughs> no, not there. Please, please. Like, look at this. Yeah. They don't even mm -hmm. know. Like we're throwing, like <laughs> we're juggling, and we're they can't even count the number of things. And I was like, "Oh, come on, guys, we just lost all our listeners from Arkansas." But still, I'm just saying, <laughs> you can look at one bear and be like, "The bear's like, what's going on?" And be like, "That's how all bears are." It's like, don't. <laughs> give them, okay, I apologize. Give them a second I'm chance. Sorry. Give them a second chance. Some bears are like, "Oh, we don't know this guy. We don't know this guy." There's a lot of different <laughs> kinds of bears. We're all we're all different. Yeah. Some of us have mm -hmm. degrees. Some of us can ride bikes. You know, we yeah. have some, some of our, some of them are yogi. Some of them are boo boo. Right, right, right. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, how about let's transition to um, Yogi the Bear is a comedy animation that's had a couple of live action movie spinoffs. In the spirit of how they've done live action Garfield, Smurfs, 
taking classic shows from the 90s and turn them into live action. They did the same thing with Alvin and the Chipmunks, Scooby Doo, you might be familiar with them. My yeah. thing is this is like a I'll throw them into the same bag because they're all generally of the same quality. Like they'll take the cartoon characters, turn them into CGI, and then get some like C tier actors to like be around them and basically you go to the movies and relive your childhood. Um my thing is there are some cases where I do feel like I been given a moral message in 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 the stories and in some cases where moral messages are in no way ever clear or close to them and i feel like here's my here's my split casper the friendly ghost that is a movie that always has or a tv show that always has some sort of message along with it with some hint of spirituality right casper is always trying to make friends with somebody Right. As soon as they realize mm -hmm. he's a ghost, they're like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. And mm -hmm. Casper's like, oh, but we got along so well. And that's how this thing ends. And you think to yourself, man, if I'm just willing to put past my biases, maybe I can get to know some really cool ghosts. And maybe yeah. I shouldn't be mm -hmm. so afraid and prejudiced by people all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. I feel that. Whereas Yogi Bear is like, I'm going to steal picnic baskets. <laughs> and he does. And there's no repercussions whatsoever. Even the cops try to stop him. It's like, stop trying to make me steal picnic baskets. I'm a bear. It's, like, it's, in my, it's in my, my, oh, what's it? In my genes. Yeah. I can't you think guys of the words. In my nature. It's in my nature. <laughs> it's in my, yeah. my nature. I'm going to get, I'm going to teach a kid to do the same thing. I'm not changing my ways. You came to my house. You came to my house to bring picked up baskets. That's, right. That's my property now. <laughs> I, and I never got, I never got the point of a Yogi Bear, but I'm just like, keep doing what you're doing. So like some cartoons are all about that moral learning lesson and then some are yeah. just like just have fun just have fun and so yeah, i like so let's add jesus to it how, okay. that, how would that change it i think adding cast i think adding jesus aspects to the casper might work pretty well like you could say for example i was talking about yeah. yogi yeah, but oh, we, can I'm go, gonna, we can go i'll, do, to, both, yeah, I'll do both i'll do both it's easy All so right. for casper basically when the friend doesn't want to happen jesus can be like oh but he was a palestine <laughs> Well, why isn't why isn't the uh, Casper in heaven or hell? He shouldn't be still here on earth. Yeah. Oh, it's like so. Okay, so every single time no one wants to be Casper's friend, they could be like, "Oh, but you deserved it because you were probably like gay or something like that." And then I'll be like, "Oh, okay, that's fair. Totally fair. Yeah, totally fair." Now I understand why I have a a lifetime of purgatory ahead of me because I was un I was unclean, unworthy for heaven, but not bad enough for hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to like you know. Uh, learn how to be a bit more heterosexual and and <laughs> buy property and yeah and and fit that social expectation and then you'll be able to go yeah. on to you know i'm old enough to have read the comic books long before there was ever a movie <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah they used to have the comic books i thought were pretty good of course i was nice. a kid, kid nice. at the time wendy you remember wendy the the little red witch girl I yeah, she have was vague recollections. Yeah. Oh, well, that was a spinoff of Casper. She was Casper's friend. Oh, so but, she was friends with the witch. There you go. Uh -huh, That's why yeah. he's stuck in purgatory. Yeah. But um you can't you can you imagine having Jesus in a in a movie with uh, our little red witch girl? <laughs> right. But, but actually, right. you know, I believe the the uh yeah, the, the Bible talks against witches. I mean, how did the uh the Puritans treat them because they were Christians, you know, and they were always looking for a witch, you know, and even sure. in Europe, they had European witch trials. Mm. So I don't think that would have worked out well for Wendy. No, Jesus Larry, was in there in the same context. I'm, I'm, and I want to really nail this down. Wasn't there a book series where you had these two boys and one boy was kind of lazy and he always had like some, something wrong with his life. And the other boy was well behaved and he always mm. had something good with his life. Do you remember the Yeah, that was part of, uh, Oh, it was a, a, a children's magazine that was always yes. laying around schools. Right, right. It was like uh, almost Boy's Life or something like that. It was like yeah, kind of like that, but it was Simon. much more animated and had had stories and cartoons and puzzles in it. Right. It's like Simon didn't wash his hands, and all of his friends are brown. Goofus Whereas, and Gallant. Goofus and Gallant. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What if was what if Jesus Christ was always in the Casper cartoons, but you never saw him because he was already in heaven? And so you have a goofus and gallant. If we threw in Jesus, it's basically Jesus in heaven being like, I am perfect. And everything here is pretty awesome. Whereas Casper's down on earth and he's like, oh man, my friend's a witch and I'm so <laughs> lonely. And it's like, Jesus is like, my friends are witches and everything's awesome. <laughs> and Casper's like, oh, I'm so sad. And he's just like, everything's yeah. great up here. I want, I don't mm. have to worry about anybody else but me.
Yeah. No, Wendy <laughs> Witch was very sweet. She I, was. She wasn't evil at all. No. Of course, that goes against the stereotype. Right. Witches are awesome. My, I, when I lived in Knoxville, my, I probably told you about this before, but my neighbors who lived right underneath me in our complex were both witches practicing with Wiccan witches. Really? Wow. Not but old Wiccan witches. They were like in their sixties or seventies and they would leave like fruit on my door. When I came home from, from work, they knew about the radio show that I was doing. I'd help yeah. them with the laundry. They let me walk their dog. Um, we got along very well. They had, they, we, they've invited me over for food before they loved Western jewelry. They were like, we were kind of like quasi cowboy witches, but yeah, they were super cool, super cool. And when I let them know I was an atheist, they're like, "Oh wow, that's awesome!" Because we don't yeah. meet people like you here very often. But Knoxville actually had a lot of flavorful people, so yeah, really good. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. We said we talk about Yogi. Now, how do you infuse? The only thing that Yogi needed was to repent for his sins. So like what and he, stop doing it. Can't just repent. He doesn't have to stop doing it. He has to repent because God doesn't care what you do. He just cares if you repent or not. Right. That's the so. thing. You know, I I, I have these <laughs> conversations with Christians uh, online generally, and they say, uh, "You just want to. You're an atheist because you just want to sin." Mm. And you know, my response is, "You know, if I wanted to sin, I'd stay a Christian because I could get for, forgiven for anything." There you go. That's you know? pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's very true. Because yep. it doesn't matter. Good people don't know. Don't, good people don't go to heaven. It's only the people that you know, pledge their soul to God that go to heaven and 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 repent for their for their sinful ways. Right. right. And the the result would be Yogi steals mountains and mountains of picked up baskets until he gets to his old age and he's on his deathbed as Boo is like looking over him. It's like you're gonna make it, Yogi. And Yogi's like, nope, this is my time. But let me do one last thing before I see the sweet heavenly pearly gates. And he claps his hands together. He's like, oh, Father, please forgive me for all the picnic baskets I've stolen in my past. Mm -hmm. I yeah. am a repentant bear willing to be washed in the blood of the lamb. Please, Father, amen. And then God's like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot no. of people are, are living their life just like that. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah finally did I'll the send thing. a little while longer <laughs> <laughs> and then his whole soul goes up to heaven he's just like ah no regrets boo boo no regrets boo -boo. <laughs> yeah. use me in his, as an example i did it my <laughs> way hey <laughs> yeah. i thought you were gonna say let me pray one last time i'd like to have a picnic basket Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> no, no regrets whatsoever. That's the, yeah. the gangster way of going out. Okay. So, um, man, a lot of good movies, dude. Okay. So I had a, I had a thing when I was growing up where it was very easy to scare me. And I know we got some listener comments. So we'll do two more movies and then we'll go straight into the comment section. But okay. uh, when I was growing up, we always had, um, I always was scared by one movie in particular called Terminator. Have you ever seen Terminator? Oh, the yeah. Mm -hmm. several times okay as a you were probably much older than i went out when you watched that movie a right? little bit <laughs> <laughs> when i saw that movie and i saw the guy turn into liquid and go through a chain link fence uh -huh. that was my mind <laughs> that was I two. Thought, hey, terminator two. okay then maybe i saw terminator two and i was too scared to see one but i saw that and i was like oh no because mm -hmm. my go-to plan to always get away from people would be like run around a fence because there's no mm -hmm. way you can go through a fence because you're made out of metal there's no way i win uh, and then he cues uh, through the fence and i'm like oh but if you could do no. that where can i run and you're already a machine i don't know what to do i'm terrified mm -hmm. that yeah. scared the life out of me but you uh, know what i didn't try doing instead of running around fences uh, pray to god and mm. I should, whenever i'm chased by a big metal robot because that always me. works well i'm just saying it should in a movie in a movie right yeah. it, like mm -hmm. send the message out and have <clears throat> kneel down on one knee clap his hands together and be like oh heavenly father there's a giant robot with laser eyes coming after me he's 10 feet away from me please save me from my sins and i shall commit my life to you oh lord oh father oh god and then the robot just like turns around and walks away and explodes like that would get out <laughs> so many pews filled wouldn't you agree like let's just take that movie all the way up until that moment like let's do terminator one exactly as is do Terminator 2 all the way up into that scene where he fuses through the fence, but have the kid kneel and pray for the robot to go away, and then it becomes a Christian movie. At the I like a turn at the hat, and you're like, what happened? It's like, Jesus, that's what happened. And people will be like, oh, okay. 
Well, I think it would work for a certain segment of the society, but I think it would make the movie flop in the long run. I mean, to the to the general people who have, I mean, the this general is a Christian population. country. What are you talking about? This is a Christian country. They would love that. They'd eat that up. Yeah, yeah. It's much less so now than it was before ever, and it's 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 leaving leaving that stance. Okay, okay, Larry, <laughs> you got the last movie. What would you like to discuss? Uh, Jurassic Park. Ooh, classic. You know, I work yeah. with a guy who considers himself a Jurassic Park expert and could literally cite the next line of any yeah. movie that you Well, I mean, it had, a, it had a valid premise that we could, if we could find old, complete dinosaurs' DNA, mm. uh, we should be able to uh, replicate it with the current technology. Matter of fact, they're, they're working right now to, re to uh, return mammoths to the Earth. Did you know okay. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this though? They they do Jurassic Park, but instead of bringing back the dinosaurs, they instead discover that the Earth is only seven thousand years old. Oh, and they're just and, like, there, and hey. the dinosaurs never existed. No, <laughs> no the, they did. They did, but it was just seven thousand years ago. And they're like, the scientists are like, we need to hide this because this goes against every single thing that we know about. And so, what Jurassic Park is as a movie really is is just about really clever. Christian scientists trying to be like, how can we get people to realize that the dinosaur is only 7,000 years old? Let's bring them back and ask them. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and they bring back the Tyrannosaurus Rex and he goes to the city. He's like, I'm 6,500 years old. And the and all the atheists are like, dang it, checkmate, hey, Christian, you win. <laughs> and then that's the with credits. You're like, you got us, good. And mm -hmm. we found the water from Noah's flood down there too. That's Jurassic Park 2. And like the next one, they'll find the ark. And the whole time, they're just like, we're finding the things. And scientists are trying to hide them because oh, they never cared about coming. Jesus. Yeah. They never cared about Jesus. Yeah. Um, you know, using their faulty logic and faulty science or and pseudoscience and, yeah. and putting out movies saying we found them. I'm sure that it's uh, coming, especially with AI making it so easy going forward. You don't need special effects. They can just create the movie, uh, you know, with anything already in it. They're built in it. Yeah. You know, um, I've always I've always thought it was a cool idea to try to bring back old animals. Um, as long as yeah. we can keep their immune system up to date, because I'm sure like even common cold would be enough to kill a moth or a mammoth these days. But like yeah. if they can bring them back and it's stable, I'd be like, okay, that's a neat, that's a neat demonstration of a lot of cool things when you have a walk though so what would you bring back uh, i i think mammoth would be nice just to demonstrate it but i don't think we should be it takes uh, a certain degree of a lot of engineering to like bring that back and my thought process would be is it the sort of thing where when a mammoth is actually walking around they finally have one in the zoo somewhere in new york that christians would see that and say oh so science is pretty good like bible didn't say anything about this science you win or will they be like oh but you know god always allowed for something like this to happen and oh therefore... yeah they'd be in apologetic mode and that's you know, uh, that's all and i it, mean when when presented with facts that they can't repute it then it right. it doesn't go against their teaching it goes with it you know we yeah, we it's you know witness uh you know the scientific discoveries that people say are in the bible or right, in the Quran, right, right, right. You know, right. but they only have to stretch to make it match, but they do it anyway. Right. Or they'd be like, hey, the guy who's the director of this 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 project, he was a Christian, <laughs> therefore, you know, it's really Christianity who did this. Like uh, it's just such a tired argument. That's the part where I just feel like no matter what you do in, in science, science, by the way, is never in the in the in the in the practice of trying to disprove what cannot be disproven like you're never going to try to prove a negative in science and so because of that a lot of people take that as an open door to believe anything right but what yeah. science is really good for is validating what is true and so like if you have something that is a statement you can use science to demonstrate whether or not that statement's accurate or not and test it and if you can then that becomes a much more reliable statement to have sure and so yeah. the fact is the matter is since we can't apply science to like any of the god claims and a lot of them just fall through the cracks or are outside the scope of science, then I feel like we have enough proven or demonstra demonstrable scientific knowledge that you can live just on that without any of the spiritual 
junk. Um, right. Well, and sure. have a very good quality of life. And there are countries right now that do that. Uh, many of the European countries are mostly secular. Mm. The uh, Scandinavian countries are mostly secular. Yeah. China, for sure. Sure. Uh, but um, you don't need it. You don't need it for you medicine. You don't need it for how to make no, You don't need no. it for how to educate. You name, name one thing you need it for. Right. Well, you, you need know. it to make those good movies. You need it to help uh, Terminator stop. For entertainment, for fictional entertainment. Uh, we got some listener comments. We'll go through them real quick. Um, friend of ours from the show, uh, Tasty Craft says, sorry to see you guys go. Heard about your last episode. Um, that's not coming up until a couple of episodes. Yeah, a couple more weeks, a couple more episodes. We do have a question. This one I'm going to throw to you. This is by Lurking, who asks, how do you feel about the capital G in God? Well, I think you should use it when you're talking about a specific God. You know, if you're talking about Yahweh and then you refer to him as God, then you should capitalize the G. But if you're just referring to any God or God, period, then you don't need a capital G. It's just a generic a reference to, to God's in general. You know, I heard that. I've also seen pastors say on a pulpit, I never capitalize the S in Satan, just to disrespect Satan. And I'm just like, <laughs> well, then, like, in my thought, it's like, then it's no longer a grammar issue. It's just an emotional issue for you. Mm -hmm. right? And what a weird thing to boast about <laughs> in front of, like, 40 people. Like, I don't follow grammar when it comes to Jesus. He goes, yeah, take that, Satan. Yeah, yeah, take that, Satan, <laughs> lowercase s. Ha -ha. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I, I'm sure he's really. Yeah, he got, you got me. You got me. <laughs> but in my mind, it's always been a job description for me. Like, I understand it in the proper sense of like Lord when you're talking about a very specific person. But I mean, there were gods before capital G God. There were lords before capital L Lord. And yeah. so I see it as a way of imbuing it with more importance. But I want people to recognize, or at least I want people to be more willing to understand when we have like these kinds of conversations that god lord savior like these are job descriptions and like these characters christ had christ names. is a job description christ is a job description they these these people had names and mm -hmm. like if you knew what the names were or what they meant maybe that would be more indicative of what those people were because like if you look at even some of the biblical versions of what god's actual name was various versions of them simply just mean one god of these people or like a one of a many God, like even Elohim is like the light of the people of, of, of a certain group of people who all who came from a class of people who are like all vying to try to have the one most powerful God. Like it, I think it's telling that we um, obscure or generalize the name of gods that we follow to just mm -hmm. job description, because that's a much more easier target for people to imbue their ego and emotions and hopes on rather than like a very specific being that you'll know more and more about in the same way that a lot of people know who the president is, but probably don't know who their governor is or know who their mayor is or people who more directly affect their lives. They just, they just need the figurehead and they don't want to know more about the details. Right. right. Um, uh, especially before they're elected, they just can't be bothered to find out about them. Yeah. 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 It's a human nature sort of thing. Like we don't like to be too generalized anyway. Uh, hopefully that was a, a interesting answer to your question today i'm glad that there's no god it's a comment given to us by darker lord uh please forgive me for this rambling uh basically he uh he speaks to um his mother uh falling to alzheimer's when she was 70 uh -huh. and um she started to refuse to eat or drink and that was the end game for alzheimer's she didn't want to be kept alive on a feeding tube especially at this point where it isn't really uh, uh, her mom anymore. He didn't really feel like it was his mom anymore, not, yeah. and not his father's wife. So she moved on to palliative care and is being made comfortable until the inevitable end. So today he's glad that there's no God because he wouldn't want necessarily for this person to be living in that state for, for eternity or being someone who she's not or wasn't for the like the last 20 years of her life like how do you how do you take an alzheimer's patient and send them to heaven or a baby and what state are yeah and what state are they in if they're going to be in that state are they going to be the version of themselves where before they ever got sick and their family yeah. years it's, 
It's like God, it, you know, you state it as an answer, but it brings up a thousand more questions. Mm. Um, and the, like, like the version of hell that we all think about is not really in the Bible. It's all from Dante's Inferno. It's a, mm. a fictional support uh, for the concept of hell. Matter of fact, the hell, they scholars say that the hell in the Old Testament was just a trash heap outside of Jerusalem. I agree. No, I totally agree. Uh, I feel like it's always a tricky situation when people think, man, heaven's a good place to be. Because a lot of times, if you had a family reunion, <laughs> yeah. they're some of the most contentious places for people to be in in the first oh, To be sure. And you're yeah. like, wait, you want to do this forever? Do you even know how long that is? Is this going to be? Are, are, is everyone mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right, there it is. Yeah. Uh, I've always said that... <laughs> Heaven is only going to be heaven for one person. There's only, because there's so many different people in the world, they're not all going to like the same thing. And so you either, you either make heaven in a way where you mutilate the brains of the other people so that they like the same thing that every that one other person likes so that they all can have maximum whatever happiness and pleasure. Or you basically have a heaven that's just a, a nice lazy boy in a white room that's just for one person and only one person can sit there. And so if you if you don't know where I'm referencing, there is a there was a uh, all, Bruce Almighty in, uh, incarnation that was going to have Steve Carell uh, be the, the the lead and Morgan Freeman as God, where he finds out that heaven is just for one person. It's literally a chair for just one person because you can't have two people in heaven because people are going to have naturally different tastes. And so whatever is perfect for one person is not going to be perfect for the second so they, God yes. just said, fine, I'll just make heaven for just one person. Mm -hmm. And here's your chair, Steve. And he sits down on the chair and he realizes, oh, man. So, like, where's everybody else? They're like, you don't have to worry about everybody else. It's like, so, like, my mom, my dad, my friends. It's like, they weren't saved. You were. You're in heaven. Be happy. And I'm like, I can't be happy if I know that other people aren't happy. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the movie didn't go through. But he does make good friends with uh, a character named Lucy who's just like, can you turn down the thermostat? It's really, really hot here. It's like, ah, it's awesome. <laughs> We got used to it. We got used to it. And mm. he's like, I don't know how to control the country. But I've always thought to myself, like, you can't make a heaven that's happy for everybody. And I can never enjoy heaven knowing that there's people yeah. in hell. <clears throat> and so the idea that there's a place just for people who are chosen, who are happy to be there, knowing that there are people who are not there, that can't loved be, ones. That wouldn't be a heaven to me. Because mm -hmm. one, I wouldn't want to be there knowing other people are suffering. And two, I couldn't hang out with people who are okay with the idea of other people suffering for eternity. Like in right. my mind, those are people that I want nothing to do with. So the further away I am from those people, the better, the happier I am. And if you just told me, hey, this is all a myth anyway, I'd be like, that that just solves a lot of problems for me. Like heaven, hell, like just it's it's done. I don't have to worry yeah. about that. When I was a kid, a uh, teenager, I used in, in Western Tennessee, a uh, uh, rural town. I used to hunt. I didn't, I, there was a period of my time when I hunted, but it wasn't very long. But during that time, I kept wondering, you know, since animals don't go to heaven, mm. you know, and I love to hunt. If I died and went to heaven, what would I hunt? <laughs> 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 That's, you know, a million, billion questions about heaven, which they don't address in, in any kind of scripture. The gears are and turning. Nobody, nobody knows. The what? gears returning for you way earlier than you yeah. give yourself credit yeah. for. But uh, I mean, nobody knows the answer, but everybody claims, especially in religion, claims to know the answer. Uh, and, and different religions have different answers. I mean, they can't all be right, but they mm -hmm. can't all be wrong, especially if souls don't exist. Correct. I know. Don't get me started. <laughs> Correct. Correct. And the fact is, you don't have personal truths, right? There's just right. one truth, and it's possible that nobody knows it. And it's mm -hmm. possible that if that's the case, we should use the most reliable tools that we have in the meanwhile. And the ones that have demonstrated the one to be the most reliable are the ones that I'm using to communicate with you. The yep. same tools that I'm using to communicate with you right now, same tools that our listeners are using to listen to us. It's science. Yeah, science. Very good method. Very good method. Not scientists. Just, and what the scientists say is the practice of science. The methodology of science. Yes, yes. Yeah. And which is Do we just, have any more listener comments? We got four more, but we're nearing the end of the show. Uh, let's try one more. Okay. I think this is one sent in by Leo Stephanakis. He says, I think religion will die out before the end of the century. What do you think? And he puts in some statistics that basically show that the more developed the country is, the less religious it is. 
So as countries become more developed, isn't it likely that religion will eventually die out? Yeah, I, I agree. As long as we experience our, our progress and, and betterment of, of society, I think that the, the premonition is, is a good one. Mm. However, let's say that this uh, this war with uh, Iran and, and Israel goes further, much further, and, and involves nuclear war, and it gets everybody involved, and we all take a, a right-hand turn back to the past. Sure. I think religion will resurge. Because it cuts out, uh, it will cut out our testing and our ability to do science and and teach and share knowledge. The internet may survive, but it would only be for a few. Yeah. So we have a vested interest in, in peace and right. going forward, moving forward, in progress. I think it's two prongs. It's like access to a high quality life, and then mm -hmm. also diversity of people around you. And right. if you develop and develop countries have two things that do they do very well. They bring in a lot of different people together into the same area and they make it easier to have a higher quality of life. And when you're not as struggling anymore and you don't need assets to get hope for, man, you'd really love that Guardian of the Galaxy game. This is exactly what we're talking about. You will find that people start leaning less on superstitions and more on tangible methodologies that are reliable, that work well for diverse group mindsets to meet a higher standard of life for everybody, not just themselves. Right. I guess we do need to close out now. We uh, sure do. Where can we find your your? Uh, I'm stuff? on YouTube. Let's chat. Let's go. <clears throat> Very Let's good. Chat. Nice. And Just we're down to a couple more shows now. Uh, sure next week, week after, that'll be it. 365 shows. Let's seven years worth of shows. You can find this podcast or this uh, show on YouTube and on our website, digitalfreethought.com, where you can click on the blog button to find all of our articles and atheist songs and this radio show archive, all 365 episodes. Once we get done, my YouTube channel handle is at doubter five. And you can find my book atheism. What's it all about on Amazon. <clears throat> Remember everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then. Don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good show. And a wrap.